Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, our topic is game for good, gaming with a purpose. My guest is Dexter Card. Welcome, Dexter. Hi, how are you? It's great to have you here. And we're here for a very specific purpose to talk about game for good. So Dexter, since I saw you last a uh, number of months ago, um, what have you been doing with this? So last time we spoke, we were kind of introducing about this uh, whole new virtual reality world kind of used for as a, a auxiliary and a complementary to real life events. And during that time afterwards, uh, we were focusing on building the G Haven brand. What is it that we stand for? And the biggest thing that come from that is we stand for being more, what we call socially conscious gamers, or as you said earlier, we game with a purpose. You know, we just want to bring people together, but we want to like do something with that. We believe that video gaming is more than just a place of entertainment, but video gaming and esports is a tool to establish and create great value and beyond just the ecosystem of esports, but in all aspects and all industries as well. And so that's kind of how we came up with Game for Good. Game for Good is the first step into demonstrating how video gaming can be used as not only a, it could be used in different industries, but as well as a, as a vehicle to do great things. Terrific. And so what it, who is your target market for this? So our target market, we got a little clever with this. We define them as the generation of gamers. These are individuals who were born into a world of video gaming and they exhibit uh, these two attributes. One, uh, I said before, uh, they grew up with gaming. They are, they're a part, the gaming video game is a part of their lives as well as their household. And then two, they have an affinity at, or they have the, uh, the act of uh, doing charitable acts, so they have social activism uh, that they want to make. They want to do what make want to make a difference, and uh, these two things combined, we really see those in the more younger generation, as well as uh, we have an alignment of those who choose to express that and try to use this vehicle for gaming to address those causes, like with charity streams and the such. You know, so it's like a Gen G, right? the generation of gamers right so That's maybe you should, really clever. maybe you should create that like tell everyone that this is for gen g and they'll go what's gen g and you can explain and do you think that do, do you think that they would buy into that <laughs> that would be that's actually a really good idea i never i never thought about it before like gen g is like yeah that that, that is perfect so i'm saying generation of gamers gen g that that is just beautiful thank you okay. that i'm, I'm taking that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm an idea person. So if you ever need any ideas, come to me and I'll tell you them. You just for some reason, I'm kind of super creative and like to come up with that stuff. So anyway, so um, tell us about like, are the gamers gaming on the platform or how does that work? Yeah, so I guess the best way to start explaining would be to explain what Game for Good is. So Game for Good is a fundraising and data analytics uh, tool and what it does is it is another uh, another service that allows individuals to give to charity uh, through gaming and how it works would be they sign up uh, and when they sign up they use their their gaming accounts and they tether it to our platform and that's how we're able to pull the, their information in terms of how long they play and what games they play because we're using the whole gameathon idea where as the amount of hours you play that's then translated into a charitable dollars or, a, or, or acts for a charity. And that's what we use to translate that. And from there, the hours they play, that is key data because it helps better understand what is it that gamers care about? What do they like? How do they game? And in this time where gaming is becoming more and more prevalent, more and more important, people are seeing that how it's be a big difference in marketing. There is opportunity to better understand this group. And then with this information we're able to get, we could then better cater to the gamers. And that's kind of the whole uh, crux of this is not only to create a way that valuizes and empowers the already gaming habits of gamers or of, of our Gen G individuals, 
but then also to be able to find a way to now that we not only empower them, how do we now use this information that we're gaining and knowledge of how knowing how they game to better impact them and empower them to make changes. So what type of um, charities or uh, what type of um, you know, programs would benefit from this? So first and foremost, uh, in the, using the platform in general, uh, organizations that already conduct themselves in uh, fundraising or trade activities. So universities, schools, or even or bigger not-for-profits that already have their own foundations, but they have that network of, uh, of givers that choose to give and that they have that and that they hold events that are able to reach out uh, and interact with the youth group. One example being the KYL Cancer Fund, the base in North Carolina, and they work with the NCAA Women's Collegiate Team. A lot of their uh, charities and foundations go towards uh, breast cancer uh, research. And so, that right there is an example of a group of individuals that work with a, a young enough crowd that we can see that there is a, a correlation between that age group and most likely find gamers in that, in, in that group. So are the gamers actually gaming on the platform? No, they're not. They're, so they are gaming by themselves. So they're just regularly gaming on the, on the regular uh, consoles or, or gaming devices. And when they sign up, since they're tethering their gaming accounts to our platform, whenever they're playing, whenever they pick up a controller, we're collecting that data, they're gaming. So they don't have to interact too much with the platform. It's more so to, to re relate to the gaming habits, making things as easy and simple as possible. So all they have to do when after they sign up and they pick what gaming account, they, they're, they play on Steam or PC, if they play on Xbox or PlayStation, whenever they play, Maybe they put that on and they're connected to an internet feed that could upload that information to the server because we use open APIs. That is how uh, they game, just like they regularly do. Okay, so, and what are the market strategy, marketing strategies um, you're using to gain users on this? So the biggest uh, driver of this platform is gamers. And so, but it's also gamers that as well have that mindset for, uh, for, for causes, for social change. And so one of the ways that we started doing this would be we speak to different, uh, different organizations that already conduct themselves in, uh, in fundraising. And we talk to them about, hey, because I mean, we look, make sure that they have a, a user group already who gives to them of that age range. And from there, then we were able to have a conversation with them like, hey, would you like to, uh, would you reach out to uh, the gamers of your group? Or another way to give a more fun, a even more fun way that is growing pop in, in popularity right now, especially with uh, the current conditions that we have, making things as, as virtual as possible so that if we end up in a quarantine again, they can still conduct business. That's one way. Another way would be we go to different gaming lounges, and different uh, organizations, one being Map Technologies that's here in Baltimore, and they already have a place of gamers. But now I've said, I'm given an opportunity to, hey, let's give back to your city. We can have causes that are, are focused on building up your city, building up Baltimore, let's now gain for them. And, and that's opportunity to now not only gain users, but give them the opportunity to actually put their gaming, and not just as a means for entertainment, but say, hey, the hours I'm putting in is just for me, but it's for the place that I call home. Okay, and so you're in Baltimore, is that right? Yes. Okay, well, did you escape all of that weather or is it heading your way? So, so it did hit. So far, I don't hear anything else right now. I think it's good. I think that it, the, well, uh, luckily for me, the, the part of it that hit passed already. So far, I see some sunlight. Hopefully we're good. Okay, fantastic. You know, so as I mentioned, I'm like an idea person. So I really want to know where did the idea of Game for Good come from? So my alma mater is Penn State and they have a, uh, they have an event called THON. THON is the uh, largest student-led uh, philanthropic organization and it raises money for pediatric cancer. 
They raise millions upon millions of dollars every single year. And they raise money throughout the year uh, from beginning of well, roughly now, the fall to uh, February, middle of February, when they give, when they finish closing all of the fundraising, excuse me, and they, uh, they donate it. And they raise on average between nine to $12 million a year, which is amazing. And that already, and that kind of gave me the, the heart of you know, charity being just a natural part, not part of our, of our school spirit, but that's, that's part of my just being as well. And so when I'm thinking about it, that combined with the idea that video gaming has always been just a place of comfort for me, it's giving me more than just entertainment. It is still still many values. The first thing I thought of was like, hey, why don't we find a way to combine the two, but in a way that no one else is doing it? Because there are the other different charities out there, but they're just function as like the middleman. They make sure that all the money is collected and then sent to where it needs to go. But it's like, okay, is that all you're doing? There's opportunities here. And how do I do that without disrupting or trying to change the behavior of gamers? And that's kind of where it came to be. You know, what's interesting is with COVID, um, a lot of the charity activities has been impacted, have been impacted. Because when you think about it, like a lot of charities use in-person events to raise money. And so are you, do you feel like this is our money to be raised in a virtual manner that's effective rather than in that usual way that they do so that they can kind of go back to raising money as they did in person? Well, I don't think this is a replacement or I don't think this is a better way of doing it. All in all, the, the point of having uh the charity in person in general is more so just like bringing people together with the wait, uh so bringing uh bringing money to, wait i'm sorry uh message came in here what was that uh oh oh, oh quick from a viewer oh okay from a viewer haha -ha, okay that's why i got confused that was from you um <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess I'll, I'll do the viewer first, if I may. Yeah, um, go ahead. Okay, so uh, question. Yeah, you know what? Let me, let me read the questions oh, for yeah, you, please. and then, then you can answer them. Okay, so awesome. there are viewers, uh, questions from viewers, and for the audience, they do come on our chat, and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, Dexter's right on it. He noticed. So the first one is, um, is Game for Good still raising money? Still raising money in regards to, like, for charities or raising money for, because that could mean, what do you mean by that, raising money? I think it means for charities. Okay. Um, so currently we are uh, transitioning to this, uh, this model. So we have kind of uh, put a halt in it right now because we're working on coding this, uh, this program. Uh, we, we feel as if uh, this would be a, a if it's re are we going to focus on making this uh, up and running, we have a lot of good traction and interest behind it. So at the moment, and we we did we've had multiple charity events. Last one we did was earlier this year for uh, mental health. We worked with the uh, the NAMI Foundation. Um, but for right now, we are focusing on building this platform to then resume uh, fundraising for charities. And the next question is, how can I use Game for Good to raise money? For my favorite cause of course so how it would work would be when you uh so when when the platform is up and uh this is one of the times where i wish i'd be able to show the demo of it maybe we do that for next time but um how we would do that would be we would be able to have your charity on our platform and how the dashboard will look it will have a list of causes uh you pick your cause that you want to uh give you want a game towards and when you do, uh, you would active, activate the cause. Uh, and so it will tether to your specific gaming account. And then the hours you put in would then go toward that, uh, will go toward that particular cause in which we would also have, uh, we also have uh, pledges and sponsors who would then give according to the amount of hours that you play. Okay, and then who do you think would be the pledges or sponsors? So, 
when people come on our platform, uh, they're already, so two individuals, one individual will be uh, people who come on our platform, the assumption that we're making is that they're already conducting themselves in charitable activities anyway. So people that want to raise charities, uh, different organizations or groups, when they come on, they would tell their other uh, foundations or causes when you want to raise charities through our platform, they will already have established uh, established uh, advertisers, follow pledgers to the platform already. And now another group who would also be able to do this would be uh, the individuals who want to learn more about the gaming, uh, gaming space, gaming ecosystem, because Game for Good also creates a mechanism to allow for individuals to learn different gaming trends, what game is popular, what do people uh, more gravitate towards. And those individuals will co or, I mean, are more likely to also uh, pledge as well, because when they pledge, when the more they interact, more consistently they interact with the group, the more people come on the platform, the more hours they play, the more data that is being derived, more valuable information they get. And so it just built, it feeds through in a positive feedback loop. So that data that you're getting cannot mm -hmm. benefit um, the charity or advertisers or brands in a way that could, uh, you know, provide, you know, sort of something in return for the money that they're paying for the charity? Yes, because right now people are trying to better understand the gamers. Since the quarantine hit, Twitch has blown up in terms of more of users, people on, who are either watching or becoming streamers themselves. And that's just one avenue because that's a, a gamer streaming centric place. And then people are, are gaming more because like, what do you go do when you're at home? Nothing more to do with than to play video games. People sometimes play video games while they're working. I've been guilty of doing that a couple of times. But it's like, it, it's the whole point is that like, when you're home, nothing, you can't, no quarantine won't stop you from playing video games. And so people want to understand this newly emerged, well, it's not a new emerging market, but more newly noticed market more. And so now that we're taken away from the whole, oh, basement dweller type of mindset to more of the, no, these are actual individuals. And some of the people who we already market to may be also gamers. So now it's a new dynamic how to think about them. How do I reach them better? How do I understand these individuals as well? And so that's kind of how we see uh, different organizations be able to be different brands, different not-for-profits, uh, even people, even non-endemic organizations. This is how they better understand because now it creates a new dynamic for some of these causes and how to think about their market groups, whether they're, whether they're focused specifically on esports and video gaming, maybe they're outside of it. So, I, you know, it seems like a non-endemic brand could really benefit from this because they could, and, you know, they can find out the data that they need in order to utilize the, you know, this kind of advertising or branding in the best way, but they could also associate with a charity through doing this. Is that right? Yes, yes. They call, it connects everybody together. It connects the gamers together. It connects the gamers to these organizations, even some big business organizations, and connects them also to different charities because all, all everything cycles through these charities uh, is, is another way for them to interact, another way for them to help raise, uh, raise awareness and money for their cause or, or other organizations, give them opportunities to learn more about what gamers are doing. And if gamers care more about these causes, then that's more opportunity for them to say, hey, we're seeing that these causes are being more focused on right now. Paying people are caring about this sort of cause, this sort of problem. How will we now tend our market to interact with this cause because we see people going there? They get, they get another way, another opportunity to market. The cause gets more money, more attention, and gamers now have feel as if their gaming is, being, is making a difference, which it is, because it's causing attention to go where it needs to. Sure, and that when you can create value for Gen G, then I think that that's fantastic. So how do you see, um, how do you best see this platform creating an impact? I see this creating an impact for, for right now, for the first overall phase when it's, it's, uh, it's released um, outside of the beta, it is, uh, I see it more so impacting 
for community building. Uh, right now we're uh, white labeling this so that other organizations could use it, but like they could be in different areas. So for example, one area in North Carolina could use it and they could use it to better impact their uh, their network, their community that, they're, that they have the arms reach at. This is more so as a way to empower, another way of empowering uh, different users, the types of users, just in this case, gamers, as a way for them to uh, help build their community, help bring attention to the community, to different causes, different issues, even raise funds to help build up uh, what they uh, what, what they want to help. Terrific. And so have you seen interest in, um, from investors or others in yes. Game Spread? Yes, a lot, a lot of interest. That people see the value in this, whether it be from the charitable side, hey, no, let's leverage the gaming that's already been, that we already know what's happening for a force of good. Hey, this, and this is data and information that we want, uh, that we, we're trying to understand this group of individuals. This is the best way to, to use this. Hey, here's a way for us to increase our funding for these uh, causes that we care about, uh, that are positive causes that our organization is raising money for, but now we have a means to extend our reach and interact with the uh, with the youth in a fun manner. And how is Game for Good different from other charity services like soft giving? Well, organizations, uh, as I was saying before, a lot of them are they're, they're just a the middleman. They 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 mediate and manage the flow of money, make sure that all the money that's collected is safe and then goes to where it needs to go. Sometimes some of them have had this conversation multiple times. You know, when the question is asked, well, how much do you take from what is raised? You know, some of them, that's how they make their, their profit. Uh, they It's free to hold a charity for the money that is raised. They may take between 2 to 5% of whatever that is. And that's how they make their revenue. And on top of that, be different the advertising as well. And so that's that's cool and all. But first and foremost, all that is is just money donations. What Game for Good does is it takes the game and thought model of no, we're translating your hours that you already put into gaming, converting that into dollars, which is then sent. And how we make money is a money subscription. So for the people who want to white label a product, we get money from them. People who value the data that we collect, we get money from them. And then from the gamers right now, it's simply just a dollar, dollar a month. Ten dollars for a whole year, and that one dollar, because once you just donate that one dollar, but that one dollar combined with the hours that you generate, it get, could be transformed to a hundred, a thousand, depending on you know what is being pledged by some of these big time sponsors, and we get our revenue up front already. So all, all the money that is is that is uh, donated, all the money that is built from this mechanism, hundred percent that goes to the causes. We get we get our money up front. Once you pay us and you interact with the platform, every all the money that's donated and that is uh, generated goes straight to uh, different causes. So gamers are playing anyway, so yeah. they might as well be raising money. And brands are they need data, and and they might as well be raising money. So when is Game for Good re released? Well, right now we're in the coding phase. Uh, we're actually in the process of uh, fundraising to uh, finish the coding. Uh, we, we have a, a WeFunder. So uh, wefunder.com slash game for good with the number four. Um, so you could go there to be able to you know, help raise money for, our, uh, for us being able to finish the coding of it. And when it's coded, we will have a MVP, which will have uh, some uh, a, a, a beta testing period to get some gamers to start coming on. Uh, and for them, the gamers that come on, uh, it's free for them to come on. And that's just to help us to make sure everything goes appropriately. And then we're aiming for uh, court, first quarter 2020, uh, 2022 for us to have our uh, uh, grand launch. Fantastic. And you know, before we um, uh, finish today, we do have, you know, I'd like to just, you know, talk about G Haven and our 
our last show, and it is available on YouTube, uh, so you can see that video with uh, Aaron Rice. Um, we had some great photo. We we had some great video of us in a virtual reality, and so I have some photos of that today. I just wanted to, you know, that's that's the three of us. We wandered around this virtual reality um, uh, situation. We had a lot of good fun, um, and there's there's Dexter. Um, I interviewed him during that um, during that show, and so if you watch that show, you can see us that, and that's him posing in front of the G Haven logo, and uh, and then we have another uh, picture of of Dexter and I looking at the lighthouse from that area. So anyway, so any last words about G Haven and what you're up to? Yeah, so uh, we stream weekly, uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays on Twitch. Um, come follow us on there. Also follow us on our Twitter for you know, more updates on when we stream and just things that we have going on. And uh, we're looking forward to come uh, please join us when we when Game for Good comes out. We can come together and game with a purpose. Fantastic. And so how can people um, contact you if they're interested? So if they're interested in learning more, even wanting like a demo, of what the experience will look like, they can always email me at uh, dcarrjr at ghavenesports.com. Terrific. It was great having you as a guest, Dexter. Always nice to see you and catch up. Of course. Um, so I appreciate it. Thank you so much for so, having me. Uh, thank you, viewers, for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be Danielle Johnson in our back to school show about scholastic esports. See you then.